Regardless of whether you're one of those diehards who's first in line at the Apple store, it always seems to feel like no matter what kind of mobile technology that you have in your pocket, it quickly becomes yesterday's news. And that may never be more evident than right now, as telecommunications providers worldwide are working on 5G, which might be just as big of a deal as when we marveled at being able to look at full fat web pages on tiny phone screens. Ugh, come on, Luke. Another G just after LTE became super widespread? Well, while it's admittedly a bit tricky to keep up with all the freaking different wireless standards and the Gs and what they all mean and all that kind of stuff, which you can learn more about up here, the industry is hoping that 5G will be good enough to end constant talk of what the next G is. Good luck with that. And we'll hopefully only need incremental improvements over time. Kind of how Windows 10 does that and they plan on updating forever. See how that goes. So what the heck is supposed to be so special about 5G anyway? Well, it's being centered around the idea that the Internet of Things, that is, connected devices that enable self-driving cars, automated homes, and more, will become very important in the near future, and that mobile data networks will need to be very robust to handle it all. With wearables, appliances, vehicles, mobile AR and VR devices, and so on, expected to push so much traffic through mobile data networks, with some devices needing as many as multiple gigabytes per second, we will need not only faster overall speeds, but also lower latency. Imagine if your self-driving car took half a second too long to make a critical turn, and suddenly you've got a huge dent in your fender, or more frighteningly, in your body. 5G, however, is not only aiming to reduce latency to as low as one millisecond to allow real-time operation of important devices, it also boasts a theoretical maximum speed of 20 gigabits per second, way faster than the quickest LTE networks today, or even Google Fiber connections. Of course, this is a theoretical maximum, and it looks like the bare minimum for the average user will be about 100 megabits. Though, again, this is still quite a bit faster than real-world performance of many LTE deployments. Part of this awesomeness is due to 5G's usage of higher frequency waves, which also gives it a much greater capacity for beamforming, meaning signals can be focused onto areas where there's more data traffic compared to existing cellular antennas, many of which are just omnidirectional and just kind of send signals out without regard for where usage is actually concentrated, which is not good. Combine that with massive MIMO, which will allow many users to share the same connection simultaneously with multiple antennas on a transmitter, similar to the newer MU MIMO networks for home Wi-Fi connections. And you'll have a network that is not only quicker, but also has better throughput, so the quickly growing number of things connected to the mobile internet don't become bottlenecked. In fact, the industry is hoping to have a million devices supported per square kilometer, possibly meaning no more delays at places like concerts, conventions, or sporting events. Of course, this is a very ambitious project, so it's not available quite yet. Current projections have 5G hitting the market sometime in 2019, with it becoming widespread around 2024 since providers not only are trying to make 5G a more uniform standard than what exists today to ensure better compatibility around the world, but they also need time to build more infrastructure. That infrastructure would include signal boosters, since 5G's shorter wavelength means it's more prone to signal degradation across great distances. But even though most of us will have to wait a while to experience 5G, trials are already underway in a few places in the United States, and small-scale deployments are expected at the 2018 and 2020 Olympics to give attendees an early look at the tech before it reaches the mainstream. So in summary, don't junk your LTE phone just yet, but don't be surprised if in a few years whatever you're carrying in your pocket ends up putting your home internet connection to shame. TunnelBear VPN lets you tunnel to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you are in that different country. They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and also have a Chrome extension so that it's made for you. Just choose a country in the app, turn TunnelBear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location. 
When you turn Tunnel Bear on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched, so you can show up as if you're in said different country. They also have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log user activity. You can try out Tunnel Bear VPN with 500 megabits of free data and with no credit card required. And if you do choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. All right, guys, if you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Check out Su Channel Super Fun because I'd soon I'm going to be on there, actually, which I haven't really been on there much lately. And also, don't forget to subscribe and follow because those are good things to do.